Pulitzer Prize winner David Marinus tells a tale of prescient wisdom in his biography of Barack Obama, relating a story of a high school age Obama asked by a teacher what people should fear most. Marinus writes, words, he said. Words are the power to be feared most because directed personally or internationally, words can be weapons of destruction. Indeed, so too can words be powerful when they inspire, motivate. Words like tear down this wall can help defeat an empire. Words like hope and change can lead to health care transformation. Words like mission accomplished can embarrass a nation. And words like are you now or have you ever been can cripple institutions and industries. Words like we hold these truths to be self-evident can spark a revolution. And words like we the people can empower the individual even though it means that words like never worked a day in her life can stir a national frenzy and words like uncomfortable can unleash a torrent of vitriol and backlash and words like happy white people's independence day can set off the cable chattering class with nothing less than more words a seemingly never-ending 24-hour cycle of shampoo rinse and repeat as needed overflow of words but that's our business, and now it's my business here on cable TV. Indeed, particularly here on Melissa Harris Perry, we're all about words, and we try to be as careful as we can to select the words which we offer to you. Because behind those words are ideas, ideas we use in this forum, this incredible opportunity to discuss with you, we hope, in some smart and provocative and sometimes silly ways. So last week, on this program, three days ahead of Independence Day, I chose my words to reflect on this nation that I love dearly, words that spoke to our nation's history, that spoke that, despite our exceptionalism, to the mistakes of the past and our undeniable building blocks of our identity in both the present and the potential of our future. I spoke of atrocities specific to America and the fact that despite those very undeniable realities, that this nation, about to celebrate the anniversary of her independence, remains the world's great promise. Out came the word police with their Frankenbite selective excerpts of what I had to say. Out came their condemnation of any criticism of the nation so close to the day commemorating our founding. A founding based on the very principle of the right to criticize, oppose, even at times to revolt. Revolt, word police, holster your weapons, pocket your badges. This is not a revolution being televised. It's just television. We're just talking with our words just as those who came before us fought and died so that we could. Still at the table with me are Democratic Congresswoman Barbara Lee of California, former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Randell, and Anthea Butler, religious studies professor at UPenn and MSNBC contributor Ari Melber. So we've been playing with this word police idea in part because Chris Rock on 4th of July tweeted one of the things I just talked about, happy white people's independence day. Now he's a, he's a comedian, right? So he's being funny. But there was a sense both in that and in some of the criticism that I took from another network about what I'd said about Independence Day, the sense that some things are just off limits, that you're just not allowed, particularly in the political realm or in the patriotic realm, to say certain kinds of things. Have we gone too far on that? Are we word policing too much? Yes. And I think that that nuance is lost. And, and what the problem is with this is that it seems to be that in on days like the 4th of July, everybody wants to whitewash, and I use that word specifically, <laughs> the history of this nation. This is a complicated history. You can't, you know, say the framers were great without talking about Thomas Jefferson owning slaves. You cannot talk about the, the greatness of the nation without also talking about the foibles of a nation and the troubles of a nation. And that doesn't mean you're less of a, you know, of a patriotic person. Mm -hmm. It just means that on days like this, the word police want to come out and tell you what to do because the emotions run high. I also think it's a political thing. We've lost a sense of nuance. Mm -hmm. um, there is a rewriting of history that is going on right now that would say, you know, slaves were okay, they were being treated well and all this stuff. And that's where I get very angry at this. So I have to just call out these people and say, I think you're wrong. And this is about freedom of speech. And when the other side does the same thing and they get upset because people call them out, it's, you know, it's quid pro quo. We, get, we need to be able to say things without having to feel as though everyone is trying to censor us. I, I disagree with part of that. I agree with, I think, mm -hmm. the point, but I disagree with the view that this is new. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, as, as for the idea idea yeah. about about how we process our anniversaries mm -hmm. you know some of that comes from different cultural goals I mean mm -hmm. a lot of people feel in certain cultures that if you're at a funeral 
you only talk about the good things. Right. And that's respect. Yeah. And, it, and that's the day for that respect. Mm -hmm. And very little else is tolerated. Mm -hmm. Other people do wakes and tell stories and mm -hmm. jokes and talk about mm -hmm. a person's foibles. And if it comes mm -hmm. from within the community, that's sometimes mm -hmm. considered the highest honor. So there are different sort of cultural baselines mm -hmm. to how we celebrate our wonderful birthday, which is this amazing country that does all these amazing things and also is not perfect. Yep. All of our politics is about the notion that America's not perfect because people feel so strongly about what they want to change. Mm -hmm. On the history, though, mm -hmm. you know, I brought just a quote from Tocqueville, who's, you know, one of the best observers of our... Oh, Go ahead, what a nerdlandy thing to do. You yes. brought a quote from Tocqueville. So Read it, Art. Well, when, you're, and when you're, your talented staff started explaining, you know, the conversation you wanted yeah. to have, I thought, well, this reminds me of something that, that, that he said, which is, I know of no country in which there's so little independence of mind and real freedom of discussion as in America. In America, the majority raises formidable barriers around the liberty of opinion. Within these barriers, an, an author may write what he pleases. But woe to him if he goes beyond them. Hmm. And I think that's what's going on as well. And that's been going on since the beginning of our history. We have one of the most robust protections for freedom of speech mm -hmm. anywhere in world history. We get out there and we defend the rights of Nazis to speak. And other countries don't do that. Right. But then we expect that we will deplore what we do not like. Mm -hmm. And we will not only say don't say that, we'll say that's out of bounds. Never say that. that you know, what happened to Chris Rock or what happens when people get on the wrong mm -hmm. side of that is the majority comes in and says, we cannot debate that. You should never have said it. And that's a and, problem in our history. And yet, and yet I want to be able to say that some things do feel like they have gone a step too far. So on the one hand, I have, I have anxiety about the word police, yeah. the idea of limiting. But then, then I hear Alan West. And I, I just I want to listen to what Alan West said on July 1st and, and maybe present a different side of this. He does not want you to have self-esteem of getting up and earning and having that title of America. He'd rather you be his slave and be economically dependent upon him. Just right, so, so Alan West, see. speaking of President Obama, says he rather you be yes. his slave. And, and th so on the one hand, yes, freedom of speech, but yeah. then I thought, whoa, wait a minute. Slave is an actual word that uh -huh. designates a specific relationship, that, and that relationship has nothing to do with free voters who choose a president. Exactly. Yeah, as despicable as some of these comments are, you know, still the First Amendment right. governs. Right. You Certainly. know, people have the right to, to free speech. I must say, uh, when you look at what um, Congressman Alan West has done. He raises money off of his ridiculous statements. He actually called, and I co-chaired the yeah. Progressive Caucus with Congresswoman Lynn Woolsey for four years. He uh, called the Progressive Caucus a, a group of communists. communists yeah. uh, mm -hmm. He takes us on in big ways, but then in another four or five hours, he's raised a million and a million mm -hmm. or a million and a half dollars. And so I think that that's important within that context to understand exactly. why some people say what they say. But we've got to protect the right to free speech, but also we have yeah. to have a balance between, you know, there's there's a lot of hate speech out there, too, mm -hmm. and that could lead to violence. And so we have to really uh, calibrate that and make sure that, that First Amendment rights are protected, mm -hmm. but that people aren't harmed by uh, much of the speech. But finally, yeah, also, let me say the unfinished business of America. Of course, race yeah. still has to be swept out of the mm -hmm. rug, I think, mm -hmm. un yeah. from under the rug. And we have to have a full discourse on race and how inequalities in this country based on race and background still exist. Yep. And I, I think your point about West is very interesting there because it's in part about how we speech mm -hmm. in the political realm. I want to talk a little bit more about things like dog whistles and gaffes and our cultural misunderstandings when we come back and more on how for some people living in the U.S. Um, it, uh, there apparently is not a guaranteed freedom of speech more when we come back. We're back and talking about the effect that policing our words in politics, on TV, in our everyday lives has on the way we agree and disagree and ultimately understand one another. Still with me are Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Governor Ed Rendell, UPenn Professor Anthea Butler, and MSNBC contributor Ari Melber. So, you know, I was saying before, I, my concern is in part that media coverage of what politicians say becomes the story rather than the politics itself. So there was this whole sort of news cycle about are the uh, are the surrogates for the for the campaigns off message, whether they're the Democratic surrogates or the Republican surrogates, are they off message? And the issue wasn't what is the message and is the message good or bad, but are the surrogates off message? This idea that like utterances are themselves news. Does that take away from what we ought to be talking about in the political world? Well, on the issue of surrogates off message, I think we make a huge mistake and the campaigns make a mistake. 
to absolutely demand 100% fealty to the message. Mm -hmm. Because I look upon my role, and I'm not a surrogate because mm -hmm. I work for him. <laughs> <NBC now. laughs> right. but, but even when I was a surrogate, even when I was chairman, I looked upon my role as talking to the people who have yet to make up their mind. Mm -hmm. And if I say the other side is all devils and demonize the other side and we're all angels and never make a mistake, right. they're going to tune me out. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, and I think you saw this in what President Clinton said, I want to say, look, Mitt Romney's a substantial guy. Mm -hmm. He was governor. He saved the Olympics. Mm -hmm. He you know, was a, a very successful business person. Yep. That's not the rub against Mitt, Mitt Romney. Right. Let's focus on these things. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the Obama folks, you know, absolutely go nuts when you say anything that uh, other than that Romney's the devil incarnate. They're crazy because you have to have... Governor, we actually have a call for you. We have a call for no. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I've never actually heard them call him the devil incarnate, but I hear you, right? This kind of... You could take it after, the, it makes, after the show. It makes a terrible mistake. For example, I said on, I forget what show, I said, um, they asked me, is Pennsylvania in the bag for uh, mm -hmm. President Obama? I said, no, of course not. Yeah. It's far too early. The margin is still relatively mm -hmm. slim. They went nuts. And I said to them, take a deep breath. Think about it. You don't want us saying Pennsylvania's in the bag. Right, right, because you want because you want people you want people to come out. Absolutely, yeah. right. So, but so, so I guess you know I'm also just you know you, you mentioned early Congressman about the the idea of Alan West actually using provocative statements as a way to raise money. The fact is politicians use words that are supposed to kind of go over the boundary a little bit yeah. in part to get free media coverage or exactly. to dog whistle to other oh, communities. Yeah. Whose fault is that? But, the, but yeah. it's ours. Well, yeah. You mean as yeah. media? Yeah, we give these stupid statements all the well, time. Can we use the biggest one of all? Death panels. I mean, when Sarah Palin said right. death panels, that thing just consumed right. the airwaves. And everybody locked in mm -hmm. to that one word, and that drove what the health care discussion was mm -hmm. supposed to be about, and it made it go into the ditch. And so, so these dog whistles become very important. Mm -hmm. So when you say, you know, states' rights or mm -hmm. these other kinds of things, you're whistling to this particular kind of constituency. And that, I think, that, that becomes troublesome. But I also go back to what you were talking about when you said um, the little thing about the Obama campaign. I also remember Cory Booker saying, which I thought was fascinating. Everybody missed this piece. He's like, I had a list of things to, to talk about, my, talk, my talking points. And I was like, my God, you actually said that? <laughs> and you're not supposed to say that, right? I mean, at least I know this. I'm not a surrogate, but you're not supposed to say that. But, but isn't the other line here power? I mean, if someone who really doesn't matter much, the, the right-wing radio hosts that get entirely too much attention and are in the business of yeah. generating attention for themselves, the saying online is, you know, don't feed the trolls. Yeah, okay, the you. people who are just throwing it yeah. out there to get you, and then we get into that cycle, <laughs> yeah. and it's not symbiotic. Yeah, that's it's why sort of can, I, can, I, can I tell you, Ari, I was so excited. I, I, you know, I don't read press about the show, so somebody sent me an email and was like, Bill O'Reilly and Gretchen Carlson right. are beating up on you on Bill's Fox. Bill's going hard and on I you. I was like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> yes! Yeah. And so, In fact, could they do it every right. Thursday? If Gretchen and, 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 right. and Bill every Thursday would just, like, call me the liberal left-wing nut job, that would be... No, and I, 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 I knew you before you had a TV show. <laughs> and I know what you care about and what you've right. devoted your life's work yeah. to. It is not generating the response. Right. I also know that you are a real person in the real world and you yeah. know that when Bill O'Reilly attacks you in the media cycle that is good for the show even though that's not what you set out to do. Right, exactly. The other side though is Congressman West and I, I would love to get your reaction because you guys are colleagues but Congressman West is not a right-wing radio host and he's not selling that's a media right. product he and he should a not be. So, so he speaks with the authority of the voters who've chosen him and may choose him again right but, but in the media we do have an obligation to deal with that mm -hmm. because he's not just that's making a, a business right? Sure but I think what what happens though with elected officials and, and politicians is yes they're going to say what they want to say some will to try to raise money to try to position themselves to win an election but what disturbs me is that, is that the media in particular mm -hmm. will look for the sound bites mm. exactly and what makes news and the sensationalism yep. around a story an Alan West story where maybe they have not told the full story. The I mean, I believe story. in speaking truth to power. Yeah. You need yeah. to edu the media and politicians should educate mm -hmm. the public about the pros and cons, what yeah. so they can make informed decisions. And in fact, be driven just by scare tactics or sensational. And in, in terms of making informed decisions, let's listen to the information we're going to get on Weekend with Alex Witt. Hi, Alex. Hello.